You are now listening to Sweep the Rack Podcast featuring Brooklyn Rob and Big Mike. Rob, what's good, homie? Mike, today is the nine-year anniversary of this memorable PBA moment that everybody talks about. Everybody talks about this moment, okay? This is like, this should go down as literally like the top 20 moments in PBA history if they ever do like a count. Um, like, dude, you, you remember this, right? That shirt, man. Nobody could forget that shirt, right? Like, and by the way, I'm going out on um, a limb here and say that I actually won 50% of that title, Mike. Well, it would probably be 25% because okay. you'd have 25%. My guy, the other guy in the pit, my guy, Jeff Butler, shout out to Jeff Butler. He would probably have another 25%. And then I guess you're saying Bill would have 50%. Yes? Yeah, I mean, I felt like I did most of the work when, when he climbed this ladder. Um, okay. I was in. You I was in the, all. You did the heavy lifting. Did all the heavy lifting. I was in all of his opponents' heads, dude. I was talking shit. I was in the front row, just absolutely. Just I was like, yo, I was in the zone, Mike. I was in zombie mode or whatever it was. What is it? Serial killer mode in the crowd. Yeah, it's not zombie mode. All right, let's be clear. Get your, <laughs> it's not, it's get, get, your mode. get your lingo straight, son. All right. Leave the, leave, the, leave the lingo to me, as a matter of fact, all right? Yeah. Uh, here's what I find. Right. First of all, shout to the Arson Low Flair, okay? <laughs> if any if anything deserves a lot of credit for this title, it was the Arson Low Flair, okay? Uh, great ball, especially for the short patterns back then. Uh, what I find hilarious about this picture is that you seem to be – Ten times happier than even Bill, who actually won the title and the money, et cetera. Like you, you are just you are beaming. You know, I Bill was. is like chill. You know, he's happy. Jeff, he's happy. But Rob, I mean, Rob's ten out of ten beaming over here. I was. I felt like I won the title. It was my first TV appearance. I literally was. Man, I had a great showing. Couldn't you know? Couldn't cheer any better, right? I mean, I practiced all week. Um, so yeah, man, that was an awesome experience though. Uh, Ronnie Russell still owes me a beer, by the way, because uh, he bet me a beer that he was uh, gonna lose to uh, Mike Wolf. So, oh, Robert Hamilton, I got more than 15 minutes of fame. My, my dude, Bill was on TV for a good hour and a half to two hours when he climbed that ladder. So, there is a lot more than just 15 minutes there, man. I was famous. Look and it me, was, man, I was, caught. Listen, I was, let, I was let, good too. Let's also be clear that it was it was that time in the PBA where uh that what they were doing with the side and the back was putting all the all the um associated people right on the side and the back. So you and Jeff and I mean the other people that were there for other bowlers and people in the industry really had like prominent seats off to the side where it was just you guys. You know, you weren't mixed in with the crowd, uh, you weren't in the back. So to speak, you were right off to the side, right on the side of the bowlers, had your own little table, own little seats. I remember you guys having some drinks there and stuff. I was oh, very man. jealous that day. I was very jealous that day. I have to say, like, you know, watching you guys, I was like, oh, man, like, that looks like an amazing setup, you know, Mike. and he went on to win. So I've Mike. never I've never been in the building for Bill winning a title. I've been in the building for some of his most crushing defeats, which stinks. But uh, nonetheless, yeah, I'm sure it was fun. Let me tell you, Mike, if I ever go back to a PBA show event, they're going to end up putting me in the crowd like they put Jordan Love's mom in, in, in Kansas City. <laughs> PBA is going to put me in literally the back row. They're like going to literally stick me in the back. They don't want to hear me. They don't want to they don't want to know me. They don't want to hear from me. They don't want to see me. They don't want any of you. Yeah, but they me. don't they don't know that in our case, it doesn't matter where you put us. You're still going to no, hear us. You're still going to see us. Well. So that's I had a, to bring back a, that memory, Mike. That's a good memory. That's a great it memory. Is. Uh, it is. It was an awesome event. Um, Mike, yeah, no doubt. What's up with you, man? How's the league, dude? Let's league let's review talk a little bit. League review. What the people come for. So I'm going to go a little bit in depth here, if that's okay. Uh, last, so we had our podcast. 
last Wednesday, and I told everybody the reason that we were late last Wednesday and we did 9 o'clock instead of 8 is because I wanted to go practice. The center was putting out the patterns, new machine, et cetera. So I went last week, and they had two lanes with the short pattern that we were going to be bowling on this week, and one lane with the medium, one lane with the long. So I bowled on the short, and, yo, it looked, it looked really good to me. It was like the gutters were hooking. Your thing was in play. It looked really nice. You know, when they carry down a little bit, I switched to an aggressive uh, reactive ball with some surface on it. That looked really good. Felt really good, right? So I go in to Lignite and, uh, you know, listen, I, and, and I'm going to preface or I'm going to say this. P people, I don't want anyone to think that I'm that guy who says, oh, you played them this way or played them wrong and messed them up. I'm not saying that. Here's what I am saying. Uh, if you have a game plan, going in and then a lot of shots go down the lane that don't really fit in with the breakdown of what your game plan was uh your game plan can go out the window very quickly you know especially with 10 minutes of practice etc so uh that's kind of what happened uh one of the guys on my a couple guys on my pair played them kind of you know uh differently you know differently from how i was and that definitely affected what was going on down the lane Made them very tough. First game, I was very confused. Uh, the urethane didn't really hook. Uh, didn't look real good. Couldn't get slow enough with that. The reactive was either same thing I was getting before, Rob. Like, I was either, you know, two eight ten or going through the face. Uh, I, I was afraid to get it right, which caused me to throw to pull it and throw some atrociously bad shots, missing the head pin left. So, first game was really rough. One one forty something I shot the first game. So, you know, right out of the gate, I'm like, oh, my goodness, right? So uh, towards the end of the first game, I just decided to ball up and go to a stronger ball. I just kept going stronger ball, stronger ball. Stronger. I, I think I threw five different bowling balls in the first game. And by the time I got to the fifth ball, I started with a purple hammer. And by the time I got to the fifth ball, I was in a, a, a storm prodigy with 500 on it. And when I threw that, that, that gave me a good look. And from there, I went 220-200. Uh, the next two games, the 220 really could have been 240. I actually went uh, rip seven pin, uh, ring 10, and then threw like six in a row uh, that game. So that could have been a little bit higher. The 200 was actually a pretty good game. The left lane got real. What happened was they got real tight right from like eight to 10 down lane. So if you hit anywhere from maybe seven to 10 down lane, the ball was just not going to hook. It was it was going to stop right there and skid right through the spot. So uh, the left lane was really tough. Right lane was was okay. And, uh, yeah, I shot 220, 199 the last two games for, uh, I think, like 570 just about, you know, which is, which is approximately like what I probably truly am right now, about 190 on a sports shot if I'm, if I'm throwing it decent and have a clue. <clears throat> uh, my spare shooting was pretty good. I missed two makeables. I missed one 10 pin and I missed a three nine in the first frame of the night. I missed a three nine in the first frame. So, uh, yeah, pretty good though. You know, not bad. Uh, my team won five. Uh, <laughs> I'll be honest. It's, it's a little, I'm having some mental struggles with what's going on in league. And the reason is because, and I'm, I'm just going to speak generally here. There, to me, to me, and I'll, I'll pose it as a question, actually. I want to hear what you think, Rob. When you bowl league, right, eat, what, uh, let's say competitive league, okay, because fun league is going to be different, right? Recreational league is going to be different. You bowl a, a serious league. Um, what should your mental approach be going into that league? Like, what should you – should you be focused on winning, on the score, on making good shots, on – keeping your team loose on, you know, like what, what's your mental approach when you bowl a serious league? I'm focused on myself um, because ultimately I know people say bowling's a team sport it, when you bowl like college, right? Competitively is a good example of it. And league, know, right? Yeah. And league, there is a lot of, you know, it is a, you are bowling with a team, but ultimately it is an individual sport. OK, meaning like you everybody has to go up and they sh they shoot their shot one at a time. So ultimately, it is an individual sport, regardless if you're bowling with a team. Right. So 
you you really have to focus on what you what yourself you're doing and then once i feel like i have it figured out and i understand exactly my game plan my bowling ball choice um where i'm playing the lanes and whatnot all about those things then i could maybe focus on helping the people around me get to that place when i feel like i'm in a good place if i'm not in a good place and i'm struggling then i'm no help to anybody around me i can't help with you have to figure yourself out first it's almost like if the plane's going down you have to put the oxygen on first before you help someone else it's the same thing with bowling right you got to get yourself together before you help somebody else so that's kind of like uh, at least how i always like looked at it for a team so I, I listen. I mean, I couldn't agree more. I, I feel like you you did an excellent job of summarizing the way I feel about it. And I also find it interesting that one thing you didn't bring up is that you you don't focus too much on the score of the game or the man. You know, I mean, I, I tend to focus on just trying to make good shots and just trying to think about what do I have to do here to make good shots, right? You know, I'm what you're right. If I'm bowling well, I'm watching my teammates you know, trying to figure out what they need to do to make good shots, what their keys should be, you know, and I kind of just like to focus on those keys. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm not in a real good place mentally at league because, uh, I don't know, there's just a very – there's a very high level of focus on the score and winning or losing, you know, and it just – I don't know. It makes it, it makes it hard for me to do what you're describing in, in your answer. It makes it hard for me to kind of focus on – you know, the things that I, I think are important to focus on to, to be successful at what we're trying to do out there. And um, you see, yeah. here's the thing, though, like the sport leagues that I've always bowled, people will, were more focused on like just trying to not like bowl like 500. You know what I mean? Meaning like they were trying to understand how to play the lanes and what to do. I don't think I've ever really bowled on a competitive sport league the leagues that i bowled were always like people just trying to learn and, and and understand what's going on out there because a lot of the people that bowled might have been a lot of their like first times bowling on sport patterns so i kind of feel like you know a competitive like a competitive sport league is is going to be the highest level of bowlers because they're, they're, they're trying to win because they kind of already bowl on this all the time. So I, I don't know what your league is. If it's it's a given. A of- it's a given. You're right. It's a given that, like, everybody's out there trying to bowl well and win, right? I mean, how much I mean, money is really we talking here for this league? I guarantee you it's not, not even a lot of money. No, it's not much yeah. at all. So people are so interested. in. But here's the thing is if you learn how to bowl and forget to score, if you focus on the process, not the result – you're going to win. So like that's the, Thank the you. Menta- well that's the mentality when look right. I want to see a That's the mentality you have to have. It's the mentality you have to have so, you know, and like Mike, it makes it hard to 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 win when you don't have that mentality right. I feel like. So Mike, so here's my tip of the week, okay? Um when I I, I I when I was really competing and I was trying to really get to the next level, I was going to see a golf a sports psychologist, but it was a golf psychologist. It's really easy translatable to bowling golf um, when it comes to like mental, right? And and he really had me focus on my my process, the five steps that I can control. Um, and once the ball left my hand, he was just like, "Well, once your ball leaves your hand, you can't control what the ball's doing once it leaves your hand. If you six, if you nine, if you stone eight, if you ten, if whatever it is, but if you um, you know, uh, made that shot as best as you could, and you feel like that ball was you couldn't make, you couldn't have made a better shot. Then you know you did your job, and you really shouldn't get too you know frustrated or angry on what the results said. You know, and it's amazing how many times I've bowled a tournament where I, I would bowl like a one eighty or one ninety, and I said, man, my reaction was really good. I threw the ball really well, but I bowled a one eighty. Like it happens, like a lot, right? Maybe, you you know, you pocket 710, you catch some bad breaks, you know, whatever it is, right? But I knew like that next game, like I was going to bowl better than 180 because my reaction was good. My timing was good. Um, So I feel like, yes, like, you know, 
people focus on the results more than they focus on the process and people need to learn how to focus more on what they're doing in the present and forget about what the, the results are. So, I mean, I don't know. That's my tip of the week, I guess. Well said. So, uh, yeah, my scores were 145, 220, 199, 564. Over. Uh, Rob, Rob, I got to say, uh, that was probably a – there's only 30 guys in the league. That was probably a top third series in the league last night. Oh, I'm I pretty bet. confident sure. in that. Um, I will also say, and, you know, I'm not, I'm not hating on people here. I've had some struggles too. But there was a, a, a regular regional player in my league last night who had uh, – I think 298 after two. Okay. Dude, it happens like, to everybody. Yeah, no, this is what I'm trying to say. Like, it, you know, people, th- I come on here, I talk about my scores, and people can say what they want, but, you know, it happens. It, and it happens more often than Dude, you would, than pe- you would People think. just like giving you shit because that's the, that's what it is. I like giving you shit. I know, I like but it. listen, I, here's the point I still can't get a match. So it doesn't matter. I mean, I still can't get a match. Because uh, people are afraid, people are afraid of 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 tough shots. Rob, yeah. I come on here and talk about shooting sub five hundred series. Yeah, no sub five hundred, yeah, yeah. and I can't get a match. So yeah, I don't know. I'm gonna your sub five hundred might be their sub four hundred. I mean, <laughs> I don't. I mean, but seriously look, though, you, you don't think that you just don't think that based off of talent, you can come out and shoot better better than four, you know, sub five hundred. I mean. I don't know. I don't know. It seems seems pretty easy to me. If you would have given me that challenge back in the day, you could have told me we were bowling in the parking lot and I would have taken it. You know. So, uh, but yeah, listen, I enjoy the league. I enjoy bowling. So, uh, all good. All right, Rob. Uh, there's not a ton of bowling to talk about, right? There's not not a ton of action out there this week. Uh, you know, we're really anticipating the ramp up of the PBA tour coming up here and in uh months, you know 60 yeah in about days. 60 something days right two months so uh waiting for that right and you know obviously uh our content will will change once once uh that gets closer uh we have some things in store for the people but rob there is one major bowling event uh going on this week mm-hmm. and that is the and i can already i can already see the expression on your face even though you're freezing on me uh it's the ibf Super World Championships uh, taking place in Dubai. So Team USA is there. Many other teams from around the world are there. Uh, thoughts, Rob? So could you can you um what was the name of the tournament again? The super the super world heavyweight championship of of the <laughs> the, the, the the universe. Okay, let let me tell you what that tournament is. Okay. It's everybody bowl. It's a glorified house shot, okay? Where Team USA, where we send out our best bowlers, are bowling in a tournament with people that you know are bowling are are from their countries, right? Which they're not exactly, you know, Team USA uh, standard of bowling. So I'm not really sure. what that tournament really is to be honest with you uh but the scores were so high um i lost mike but that's fine we'll keep the show going um let's talk let's let's get some people in the crowd here what we got here uh going on sandbagger who's a sandbagger mike's a sandbagger no he's actually really bowling really bad um uh, howard forrest man brooklyn what up man I hear you. I'm in two leagues. One, I average 212, and it's a fun league. The other more competitive league, I struggle with a 193. It's all about your mental focus and ability to slow yourself down. I couldn't agree more, Howard. Uh, I feel like that's absolutely, um, you know, true. You just got to, like, it's amazing how you can bowl two different leagues. Mike, you're back. I am. Yeah, I had to, I had to reload there for a minute. Uh, all right, so-, so let's talk about the IBF. The IBF, right? Glorified uh, house shot tournament. Flying 17 hours to Dubai to average 260 or 250. Uh, the competition isn't great. Um, you know, there's Team USA. We're, we're sending out our best of our best. And, you know, I, I feel like the international, maybe other than, you know, countries like England and maybe some other like specific countries are really just there to like represent their country. Um, and I just, I think. 
I don't know what what are they bowling for gold medals or whatever like, but like bowling's not even in the Olympics. Um, so I, I don't know. I'm just I'm gonna get a lot of shit for it, Mike. Especially if like the high level players are watching this. I know like someone like a Belmonte will be the first to be like, "Oh, hey, mate, like you know this is high competitive international bowling," and I'm just gonna be like, "Look, like." I, I'm not – I just don't care. Um, maybe if they put out a competitive shot and they put out something like you bowled on Tuesday nights, we'd actually get to see some real bowling and and, and see some real, uh, you know, competitive, like, people – like, competitive bowling, right, instead of a strike fest where, yes, for Spencer average 269 for a block, you know. Um, yeah, so I yeah. saw – I mean, I saw some of the scores there and uh... – you know, yeah, they were definitely uh, high. You know, the scores were high, no question. Mike, Nico, I didn't know that. So, Mike, did you know that that they're not switching on on doubles lanes? They're just bowling on the same I was, lane. I was not. I was not COVID? aware. Is that a COVID precaution? Because I mean, that makes zero sense. But the IBF in general has some like weird stuff. They got weird rules and. I don't know. I, yeah, their their scoring system is somewhat different. You know, there's there's some major like the Amish, differences. Mike. It's like the <laughs> Amish, the Amish bowl. No, not frames. not exactly. There's just some major differences in you know how they do the match play scoring and things of that nature. But yeah, I mean, listen. The the main thing that I uh, took note of, the main thing that that I saw was just the scores. And I saw I retweeted that video, right? Um, of the the, <laughs> the no thumb lefty. From Uz- Uzbekistan, I think it yeah, was. He, I know he didn't throw it really good. Shooting three hundred, and I mean, I don't know, man. Like, it, you know, I don't know. Like, I, I'm not judging, but you know, they didn't look like really quality shots to be uh, to be shooting three hundred. You know? What's the compensation, Mike? I always wonder this. Like, okay, like Butcherif went and in, in uh, you know uh, AJ Johnson. I like to hit up AJ and ask him, like, how much money do we do those guys get paid to fly seventeen hours to Dubai to bowl? Because how much money would they have to pay you, Mike, to fly 17 hours to bowl in that in that tournament? I don't know. You, you might get me to do it for free, honestly. Maybe. I mean, I, I would go maybe just to like visit another country and go like see go like bowl. I mean, especially if yeah, we're bowling on if we're bowling on something hours. where I can wheel it like that, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> let's but go. I, I thought you hated the house shot. Oh huh? well. See, but it's an international competition, and the lanes are, you know, certified and all that. So, you know, we, we, we're we not going to call it a house shot no matter how easy they are. I don't even care. It's an know. international it would be, competition. It would take – It would take. even if they told me, like, I was going to go represent my country, I, you know, look, I, I might do it just to do it, but I, 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 I could understand why guys like Bill and, you know – guys who are you know rash and whatever like i could understand why those guys like don't want to do that anymore um i don't think the financial like what they get back and what the time they have to go do it is you know worth it for them honestly it's good for the younger guys like andrew and 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 aj and, and jacob you know yeah, Nico in the chat asking, uh, "Did you see Andrew Anderson and the spinning pin?" I, I did. That was a that was quite an impressive messenger. Uh, that was that was a and you know can I say I think I feel like ninety nine times out of a hundred the spinning pin messenger in front of the ten always misses. Mike, his and, and this comment. one hits. This one hit, and that's what made it so interesting to me. Shout to Andrew Anderson on that. Chris Lutz sounds like a watered down competition that nobody's going to want to watch. How is that good for this for bowling as a sport? I mean, fair point. But can I can I make a counterpoint to that? You know, uh, I don't. I mean, listen, I, I it is watered down a lot. It's t- it's it t- well. Watered. Hold on, hold on a minute. Uh, it's tough for me to recall the exact dates. I'll be honest, because I follow so much bowling that it all gets blended together. But I believe, like the last world competition pre-COVID uh, that took place, uh, Italy beat Team USA. So, so I don't know, Chris. I don't know how watered down the competition is. You know, obviously Team USA is strong. Italy's got to be at least decent if they beat Team USA, and I've seen some of their guys put up big numbers. You know England has a decent team put together, you, you know, you just, just based off of the guys that bowl the PBA Tour. Um, you know, Jesper, right, and his his crew, you know that they're going to have a decent team. So 
I, I don't really know about watered down, uh, so to speak. I, I, I get you. I get you. But, you know, I do have to make a counter argument there, I feel like. People love watching Strike Fest over grind outs. Okay, I understand that. But where is anybody watching it? Like, where is it? Is, is it Mike is now? I, I don't know because, like, look, I'm not interested. Yeah, it it's, it's, it's about, or? yeah, you can stream it. It's available online, uh, you know, and yeah, I don't, I mean, I, have you watched I, any I, of it? And you're a bowling, like, I, I haven't, I haven't because it's, it's all, right. it's all local time to Dubai. So, so what is that like? What is that? I'm not, our time? Sure. I'm not even sure. It's just I don't I don't believe it really matches up with my time here on the East Coast. Hey anyway. Siri, what time is it in Dubai? Hey Siri, what time is it in Dubai? It's five. It, it's five twenty-seven a.m. right now in Dubai. Okay. So they're literally so they're about nine hours ahead, I guess. Ahead, so you yeah. have to, depending on when they would, if their squad starts at like eight a.m., right? You have to start watching like at like probably eleven or twelve, like your time at night. Yeah, yeah. So okay, um, you know, I I I saw that comment about Strike Fest versus Grind Fest, and I, I hear you. I, I understand. I understand people like a Strike Fest. Now here's okay, okay once in a while, but. For, for an up. international world up. championship, I don't know. I, I think I'm, I'm, you make I'm them a little bit tougher. Here. Now, here's a big here's a big question: If this event was going to be a live TV show on like FS1, where they took like the top like I don't know five countries and you bowled a baker, I don't know two out of three matches against each country. Now I'm starting to pique my interest. Right, because you you would be able to watch it live, and you'd actually be able to like learn the other countries and the players. And wow, this kid's got talent. Because I'm sure there's a lot of young, talented kids in a lot of other countries. Um, but like to me, like there, you want to get exposure, like to like international bowling. You have to put it on a live television show in the states. Okay. Yeah, it's a tough sell, I think. Anthony Spagnolia uh, in the chat, what up, Spag? Saying two-hander from Italy that bowled 300, throws at 100. I, I agree. That dude's got game. The, whoever that dude is, like when I saw him shoot that 300, I was like, wow, that dude needs to come over and bowl on the PBA Tour and see what he's got. Uh, so, uh, Jimmy. Oh, Jimmy. <laughs> Jimmy. Jimmy's in the building. An, an actual World Series of bowling. Yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> Yeah, but hold on, Jimmy. When when bowling, when the PBA created the World Series of Bowling, really what they were going off of was the World Series of Poker and the popularity of that and, like, trying to piggyback on that. And I feel like the name, the World Series of Poker, uh, refers more to the uh, the large spread of games that you see there than it does the international competition, although now I'm sure it applies to a lot to both. But, uh, yeah, I hear you there, Jimmy. Hope all is well, man. Anyway, so that would be at least my like input. Like, I'm not a big fan of the IBF, but that's the real reason of that is is because of the fact that I don't I don't really know any of the other countries and the players. Like Spag said, this Italy kid, like I'd have to be on the internet, like watching a live stream or or Facebook like post or someone shared it or whatever to uh, to see this kid throw one shot for 300. Put him on TV, you know. Put him on FS1. Let's see like their top five, you know. Make it a, a you know a day event and let's get some exposure. It, it, so it, it's it's somewhat telling, I guess, right? That oh oh, I mean, okay. So you have select top world players on certain teams who come over and compete and have had success on the PBA tour. Is that is that fair to say, Rob? Yes, yeah, sure. right. Like I you mean, have select of- guys from various countries that have come 100%. over had success on the PBA tour, right? But I think it's somewhat telling that you know you pr- you probably have people on these teams who are the number two or three or four guy in their country in their entire country for the sport of bowling who we've never seen them bowl a PBA event and they've never yeah. come over to compete in something like the World Series of Bowling and you know listen it's telling right we we we've discussed and we all understand I think most of us understand that, that listen to this show 
the reasons why that might be the case, you know, i.e., uh, lack of money for the most part. You know, the the idea that you re- you know, in order to t- spend those expenses, you really have to uh, be able to compete at a at a at a decent level, and perhaps uh, you know even make a run at a win to make it worth it. But uh, yeah, I just I, I think I think that's an interesting part to it when I see these videos, like 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 Spag said of this guy from Italy who I've never heard of. Never seen a bowl of PBA event. And I think, well, if he's the best bowler in Italy, then why aren't the number one, two, and three guys from Italy over here bowling PBA events in the World Series? You know, and 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 to that thought, Rob, right? You want a world competition featured on TV, et cetera. If that's gonna happen, there's only one way that's gonna happen, Rob. And that's gonna be through the PBA. That's it. It's the that's that's the only way that would happen, is if you got enough guys from these countries. Where you got three guys from all of these main countries with ball with decent bowling programs coming over to compete on the PBA tour on a regular basis, and then running something within that. If that makes sense. Let me sense. ask you. So let me ask you: If Flow Bowling streamed the IBF tournament, would you be more inclined to watch it? Not or really. TV? I mean, no. If it's, you had a subscription, like if you had a no, good streaming. Service. No, to me, it's about the time. It's about the time for when it's on. When is it on? You know, if you tell me it's on when I'm off from work and I'm home and I'm available generally, then yeah. But, you know, that that time is limited. Like, my time to watch bowling honestly becomes more and more limited. But, all right, Rob, uh, we're, we I have somebody I want to bring on. It's actually a perfect time to bring him on because we're sitting here discussing an international competition that had uh, very easy lane conditions. And I feel like if this guy was in charge of this international competition and lanes – they wouldn't be easy. People would be pulling their hair out. I bowled his event, uh, I think it was last weekend or two weekends ago. Uh, let's say hello to uh, multi-time guest on the show. Uh, tournament uh, runner extraordinaire, also a very good bowler himself. If you didn't know, you'd be better ask somebody because he can play a little bit. Uh, Greg Tack, what up, Greg? What's up, gentlemen? Uh, I got to say, uh, I've, I've told this to a lot of people. It, it might be a little arrogant, but I'll tell it to you guys. If Belmo bowled my friction marathon, I bet he'd average 180. They are that hard. Do you hear, Rob? Do you hear this? Friction marathon. Yeah. I, is he that run- just like what short, like flat patterns? Yeah, it's a short flat. It's super short. And then I think in the same weekend, he usually runs a friction less marathon. So one day yeah. is the friction marathon, and one day is the friction less marathon. Yeah, the the frictionless marathon uh, is is super heavy oil and very heavy volume, and the day after is very little volume and very little length on the pattern. Uh, they're very this, they're very hard. I, I I think that the the guys that they're bowling on international competition, you can close your eyes and throw strikes on those patterns. They're they're absolutely wide open. Clear clearly, you're not a fan of that. I, uh, I, you know, I gotta be honest. It, it it makes for really good TV. It makes for really good Instagram reels. And but it's on night. It's not on TV though. It's that's, it's, that's uh, the point. it's 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 uh, you know, as far as as far as you know, striking on TV. Yeah, we we want the best in the world to to be striking on TV and and have a have a chance. But it's it's uh, it's it's interesting because when they when they're that when they're that wide open, the scores are that high. It, does not become a game of of margin of error. It becomes a game of what ball looks the best and where you got to be for the margin of error. And those are challenges of their own, but those are it's very different than shot making. Oh my goodness! See what you're doing, Greg. We have people in the chat that are that are calling. Oh, we keep Rob and I can't hit. We keep we both keep hitting it. We want to get it up. We have people calling you out, Greg, saying they will take that bet for any amount. Belmo <laughs> on the friction marathon, uh, one eighty. Belmo, if you're out there and you want to come bowl the friction marathon, let's make it happen. Um, uh, Bel- Belmo, I'll fly you up. I'll fly out of you out to bowl. This is this is this is uh, this is this is a, a a bit of an exaggeration, and perhaps I'm perhaps I'm exaggerating, but they they are really hard, and and you know the best shot maker of the day. If, if Belmo's the best in the world, I mean, I I I I think he's he's got quite a bit of titles to his name. He's the best in the world. Got to got to make shots just like everybody else, and and uh, that that level playing field is 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 what I strive to to bring to the table. So, if you think Belmo would average one eighty, do you think Kyle Troop would average like one ninety five? 
<laughs> you see what I did there? You see what I did there? I know. I know. Yeah. They, uh, yeah. they, they, well, you said, they, you said he's the best in the world. And I don't, I mean, no disrespect. You know, my man is like on his way to being the goat. But uh, right now, I, there's definitely at least one person that would argue with you there, Greg. You know, so there's, take, uh, take, there, there, there are probably a few that would argue with me on, on that one. Uh, but that is yeah. uh, that is that is one that you'd have to hey, see Greg, to, to have it happen. I would I would maybe even take you up that bet on myself, let alone Belmo. On one oh, one. oh, my goodness. All right. All Man. right, Brooklyn, Rob. I'm going to put it to you this way. The cut of that tournament the last few years we've done it has always been under a 180 average. So you've had to average 180 to make money. The winner of that tournament two times has been minus. Only one person has averaged over 200 in the friction marathon. It's Andrew Hall. He averaged 202. Okay. So uh, you don't Greg. scare me, Greg. You don't scare me. All those numbers, you don't scare me. No fear. Rob's got no fear. No fear. Uh, so, Greg, hey, I bowled you. you come out and bowl. No, yeah, uh, maybe, maybe we'll yeah. get about there. Uh, I bowled your event a couple weekends ago. It, it was a good event, fair as always, et cetera. Uh, Brandon Runk, I believe, was the winner. Uh, I've seen his name in the PBA Eastern region, so I assume he's a pretty experienced, uh, good bowler, definitely threw it well. Um, you know, another good event. Uh, give us a rundown uh, quickly here of uh, of what events you got coming up for for people that are, you know that listen to our pod here that are in the area that might want to bowl. We've got Thanksgiving Eve Marathon in PA. Grinch Classic is even harder than the Friction Marathon. If you average that, that tournament is 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 very hard in itself. That's coming up in December. We've got the Frozen Frenzy Seven Game Marathon. Oh, sorry, I'm going too quickly. The the Grinch got, Classic got, is at got th- Lodi Thanksgiving, Lanes. Th- okay, Thanksgiving Eve in Allentown, right? That's that's for the late night people who want to bowl uh, the night before Thanksgiving. Uh, then you have the Grinch Classic, which is going to be at Lodi. Okay, go ahead from there. We have the Frozen Frenzy at Bristol Pike. Ooh, home of Bill O'Neill, Rob. Home, home of Bill Center O'Neill. Of none other than Bill O'Neill. May, when, when is that? What's the date on that? That's the 23rd of January. Ah, ah. He won't be around. Otherwise, I was going to say I'm dragging. I'm dragging him out to bowl. Uh, all right, I'll be. I will. I, Greg, book me. I'm that. I'm at that one. I will be there for that. All right. One. Go I, ahead. I'm, what else? I'm, Run I'm us down. You. I'm signing you up. We got a seven game marathon at Deptford, and then we we go ahead to our extreme pattern weekend. We got our our frictionless and friction marathons where, you know, I I I may I may regret saying that Belma would average only 180, but. If I say something like that, maybe he'll give it a try. <laughs> so, all right, yo, gr- great schedule. Uh, New Jersey Sport Bowling, right? New Jersey Sport uh, Rob, th- th- Greg is one of the few guys that I know who can, you know, run a sport event and get 60 plus people to come out and bowl for money on a sport pattern. Uh, Greg knows because I text him and let him know that I've been trying, you know, to build a little grassroots thing down in my area at Knob Hill. And, yeah, I can't – yo, Greg, I was just saying earlier, you probably heard while you were backstage, I can't get a match. No one will give me a match, right? No no one – no one even anyway, okay? I'm not I'm not looking to bowl the Joe Paluzics and Alex Cavaneros. So wait, 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 wait. I got an idea. Region. I got an idea. Why don't Go you ahead. make an announcement at your tournament next, Greg, that – Big Mike has an open challenge at his tur- at his deal Friday night. Get I'll, this guy I'll, a match. I'll do, I'll, I'll do that. Let's 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 uh, uh, let's set that up. Mike. <laughs> I'm not yeah, sure that. Mike. All right. Can I say Mike something? Mike don't want no. that smoke. Mike don't want All that right. smoke. No, I'll take I'll take yo. I'll take whatever smoke, son. All right. But take the smoke. I'm I'm I'm, I'm trying to I'm trying to just you know I'm trying to get an even match. You know you 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 get somebody who's a a, a quote unquote professional amateur. I got to be honest. That's not a fair match against me. That's not my level. You know, I, I am a, I am a, uh, you know, a once a week league bowler, occasional tournament bowler. So, you know, I'm looking for for fair matches. I'm also looking to bowl because I think it's interesting to compare to bowl against guys who have more experience on house conditions than they have on uh, on, on the tougher stuff. But at this point, I'll be honest. I'll take whatever match I can get. Uh, actually, at his last tournament, Rob, when I was done bowling, somebody came up to me 
who we uh, have have discussed an, an issue they were involved in on the show before. And they came up and they were like, yo, Big Mike, what's up? And I was like, yo, do I know you? They told me their name. I said, yo, no doubt. I remember that we talked about you on the show. And they actually offered to come out and bowl me and said, you know, yeah, I'll come out and give you a match if you want. And I, I said, yeah, sure, come out. You know, I'm, I'm open to whatever. But my point is more so that it's tough. It is. It's tough to get people to come out and compete on that stuff. And, and Greg, you know, uh, you, you've been able to build something something really good. Uh, so I give you credit for that. Uh, I, hope, I hope that it keeps going. And, uh, you know, obviously I come out and support whenever I can. I felt bad over the summer because I was busy and uh, I really didn't get to anything that you were running. So uh, I was glad to show up a couple weeks ago uh, on Halloween and be able to bowl. Uh, not only did we get a bowling tournament, we also got candy. And, uh, <laughs> and, and, and yeah, that was all. See, Jimmy, Jimmy in the chat is saying, can we get a Joey Pants match? Listen, I would bowl Joey Pants, but is that a fair match, though? A guy who, who quote, unquote, bowls for a living, owns a pro shop, has access to all kinds of bowling balls that he wants. Like, I don't know, Jimmy. I, I, like, is that the kind of match that I want to take? I'll take the match. But I'm saying I'm I'm the I'm the big dog in that match. I'm a huge I'm a I'm probably a three th- three three and a half to one underdog in that match. No, you no you're like a ten to one on that match. Ten to one. Kidding? Get it? Yeah. What? Yeah. Yo, yeah. You you better put some respect on my name, son. We, we should one. we should get the, we should Palooza? get the same odds. Get you like it, uh, if it. Mike only loses by ten pins, he wins the match. Hey, All right, I'll we, say this: I was gonna bowl pants. If I was gonna bowl pants, and we looked at our our life record, win loss record, pants would be a twenty five one underdog bowling me, kid. <laughs> Remember that? Yo. Remember that? Yeah, twenty five to one. Oh my goodness! That. Win loss <laughs> record. JBT, the kid beat me twice <laughs> in like thirty times. Yo. You tell him I said Yo, that. Yo, you're He's going like, all the way back. Wow. You're going yeah, set up this recording, Rob. You should come out and bowl the friction marathon. You might, you might oh, rethink man. what you said. Oh my goodness! Uh, I love well, the friction, baby. I, I I live in the friction. I'm like a I'm like a cactus. I love the fr- I love the dry. <laughs> I love the desert. Yo, yo, you're off the rocker, son. Uh, but but honestly though, I, I would take the match. But yeah, I, as you said, Rob, I'm a huge dog. I don't think I'm ten one. Depends what pattern okay, you put yeah. out. Pants yeah, is pants really is good. good. Yeah, no he's doubt. good. I'm just no look, I'm just I'm just messing around, right? Pants has been bowling. He bowls hours. I just I just saw a post from Pants that said he had a three hour practice session. session yeah, Mike, I the know. last time I had a three hour practice session was probably like twenty years ago when I bowled for Saginaw <laughs> Valley. So, you know what I mean? That's kind of where where we're at these days. We're better podcasters than we are bowlers. Okay, and, and clear, clearly, clearly, those, Tack those is a better tournament director. I'd imagine Tack, you would probably consider yourself a better tournament director than actual bowler. Mm. I would at, at this at this point, I I would say so. But the bowling's catching up, and 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 I gotta say, clearly those guys out there, I I know that they the scores might look high, but clearly they had to go through a process to get out there. So they're they're good bowlers in their name, and Bellows a very good bowler. Do not get me wrong, but yes, I would say I'm. I'm a, a better tournament director at this point than a bowler, but it's it's not far I off. I'm I don't know day. about that. So you know, Rob, get old. Rob, Greg, Greg won the Greg won the New Year's Day marathon. Okay, yeah, that's it's a one big thing. I know he won, and he yeah. bowls he he bowls Eastern Regional tournaments and regular. You know, has made a couple cuts already. So, like, I don't know about that. I mean, I think he's selling himself a little bit short there. But listen, yeah, I'm open to whatever matches. So, Greg, if you can hook me up, I'll take them wherever I could get them. Uh, you know, listen. It- Mike, ahead, I'll, I'll, I'll come down and bowl you once if you want. I'll come uh, down and bowl. Come bowl me. It's fine. I'm open to it. I'm open I'm, to I'm, it. Uh, I'm, I'm coming to bowl. Um, uh, I'll come bowl next Friday. I'll come bowl. Let's go. Bowl. How okay. many pins are you spotting, Mike? Though, how many pins are you spot him? I'll no, spot you. No, I'll spot you. I'll spot you seven pins. Seven no, pins. I don't Mike need any it. spot. I don't Mike, need any spot. I'm it. good. You know what? You know what? Uh, you know what's significant about seven pins, Mike? What's that, Rob? I said he just bowled 560 in league. Take the seven pins. <laughs> <laughs> it's on the table. It's it's no uh, it's no slouch if you take him. All right, we'll set it up, Greg. Uh, always good to talk. Good luck with your tournament series. I'll see you at a few events, and uh, yeah, I'll remind the people of what's going on here. And uh, good luck, man. Continue to do your thing. Greg, good luck, man. Gentlemen, thank you so much. And uh, and Belmo and Troop, you guys are great bowlers. Got to got to got to say that, you know. Got to got to get that political smoke. correctness in there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. We're tweeting it out after. All right, later. True. Later, Greg. <laughs>
Yo, I'm, uh, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm tweeting this out later so Greg gets all the smoke from Belmo and Troop. Yeah, I'm right. Like, uh, we got a guy at tournament director says, Belmo, you can't average 180 on his fiction marathon, you know, and I'm, I'm hoping Belmo gets a, res- I get a response from him. It's quite the challenge, quite the challenge there. Uh, no, he honestly, though, he does a great job. Uh, I was actually talking with a couple people through text after I bowled this tournament. And, you know, listen, like bow, the bowling community is going to need people to do, you know, you know where I'm going 100%. with this? Like Absolutely. to do these types of things as time Dude, goes on. And every, there's not a lot was... of people out there that can do them and do them oh. well and keep people happy, et cetera. And, you know, Greg does a great job. So, you know, that's why I bring him Honestly, on to promote it. There, there, there needs for bowling to succeed in the competitive environment. There needs to be a Greg Tack in every like city across the country. Honestly, yeah, he like, takes no no money from the events too, Rob. So I just throw that out there as well. He takes, oh, he takes dude, no money, and 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 you guys are based out of the East Coast. That goes yeah. against everything, like that I ever grew up knowing bowling tournaments in the East Coast. <laughs> I mean, yeah, the tournament director is supposed to get the most money. From the tournament, tournament, right? the tournament director would leave in his BMW and go home and to his to his mansion, and he would run a tournament every month. Um, I True. mean, dude, the scams that were going on in, in, in as a tournament director when out where I was growing up, forget about it, man. These people were taking so much money. You would, dude, there would be cash everywhere, and they would be walking around with hundreds would be coming out of their pockets, like they were. They, they were robbing the people like literally they, they should have had masks on and like guns and they should have just been shooting their way out of the bowling alley because that's what really what they were doing. So good for Greg, man, not taking any 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 money for his tournaments, man. That's unbelievable, man. What a dude, you guys you got to support that tournament as much as you can, man. Yeah, that's why I try and go whenever I can. Uh, I remember going up to New Year's Day Marathon at Carolier when we couldn't bowl like when we were teenagers and they would have the brackets. Like oh. on the back wall. Do you remember that? And do you remember, remember how many brackets there would be? I mean, Dude. and there were sets like two, three, four, three, four, five, two and a half, three and a half, four and a half. Right? Like, <laughs> yo, yo, it was crazy. It's, it's and I remember looking, make. I remember looking at like the, the sets of brackets on the walls and, and like you couldn't even weird. calculate how much oh. money they were making. Like it was no, impossible. Um, and I was just like, man, like this is crazy. I think the, I don't remember the exact story, but I think like Pharaoh Williams one year like walked out of there with like like over like fifteen or twenty something thousand dollars in brackets or something crazy, like yeah. The New, the New Year's marathon was just unbelievable. The brackets, the cash flow that was going in and out of that tournament. But anyway, back to like those tournaments. Yeah, man, like that really needs to happen. Like there needs to be a Greg Tack running tournaments all across the country. Guys that just want to see competitive bowling succeed, run tournaments, like doing it. Um, man, I, you know, the, the, we have, you know, Theo, who's in the chat, who does it in Arizona here once a month. Um, you know, I plan on, you know, once I get ramped up and start bowling again, um, you know, we'll go bowl his tournament every month because, you know, he's getting 50, 60 guys too, and they're putting out really tough shots too. So, you know, kudos to Greg, man. It's always, uh, you know, I want to hear you, Mike. You got to win once, man. We got to hit. We got to. We got to get. Dude, I, tough comp, tough competition. His tournaments, man. I'd be, I'd be, I'd be super pleased to win one of his events. To be honest with you, I'd yo, be super Jimmy, pleased. Who's running your tournaments, Rob Vito Corleone? Yo, <laughs> yeah, I'm bowling Vito the Tony honest. Soprano sweeper. Dude, Vito Corleone was honest compared to the guys that were running tournaments around my area, man. You don't even <laughs> know, like, dude, these guys would come out oh, of. Oh like, my goodness. Dude, all kinds of scam. They, but the best is when the bracket people were actually backing people in the tournament. And then they like they would back like people in the brackets they were running. And then frame six or frame seven, like the scores weren't like the brackets weren't even posted yet. And you go and like, oh God, here we go. The big, the big scam is running. You know what I mean? Like all kinds of shit. Anyway, Mike. Let's give the people what they want, Rob. Yes, sir. Let's do it. By the way, uh, we got a preview of the uh, of the of the sweep the rack, uh, sweep the rack. Lindy's bags, worst of the week edition rosin bags, and I got to say they look pretty fire, Rob. Yo, man, it's gonna be the best rosin bag ever. Like you might see a lot of video reviews. Slow gotta motion. have it in your bag. 
Got to have it in I, your bag. Dude, I might put a slow motion of me doing this with the rosin bag. And just it's a must have. the rosin come out of the rosin bag like 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 LeBron. You know, so have it's to have it. It's, it's going to – Mike, worst of the week. All right. I got I got the best worst of the week, okay? All right. This so is... I'll, I'll go first. I'll go first then. Okay. okay. And, of course, uh, shout to Tim Buck. Shout to Tim Buck. We're still getting the goods, Tim Buck. We're still getting the goods. Whoever his, you, whoever his rat is who goes and tells him what we say on here. We're still getting yeah. the good, so no sweat. Yeah. Oh, uh, if I ever find out who that rat is, oh, ooh, you're, gonna, oh. you're not going to want that smoke. Hey. Snitches get so snitches. It's from the USBC Bowlers Discussion Forum. Uh, that's where we're taking this from. And uh, obviously this was sent to us, and it struck a chord with me, Rob, because of my struggles in league early in the year. You know, it's, okay. it, it struck a chord with me here. So uh, okay. here's the post. It's by – Caleb Bryan. Congratulations, Caleb Bryan. Congratulations, you won worst Caleb. of the week. Congratulations. United States, is that the USBC balls discussion? You, yes, of course. Of course. We're still course. getting it. We're still getting it, Tim. We're still getting it, Tim. What a, what a hold me back. Hold me back. <laughs> uh, Caleb Post. Anyone else ready to throw their equipment in a lake this year? I've been there plenty of times. Oh, Caleb. I, yo, I feel you. I that's feel not, Caleb. When Mike, I read that, I was not like, worse. Caleb. I I understand you, but Mike, I, that is not a worst. I, I get post. you. I get Where you. you. I understand you. That's how I felt when I read this post. And then there's a now there's a couple. I felt that way at first, but then I read a, a couple of responses were sent to Ooh, us here. The Rob, response, post. the worst of the week. So be response. <clears throat> one response from Joseph Savoda says, mm. "Yes, my local bowling alley is using a different oil, and it's not a typical house shot." Oh, 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 oh man! Oh, oh, yeah. and it, well, now when I now when I read that, and uh, I'm kind of like, well, wait a second, is this guy's complaining about house shots and wanting to throw their balls, their equipment in a lake over house shots? So when I realized that, it was an easy choice for me for worst of the week here, because you know, come on, guys. I mean, I feel I thought I understood you. Because you're bowling bad, you're struggling. Maybe you're bowling on something tough, etc. I understand that, but come on, throwing your stuff in a lake on a house shot, you know? Because they used all ha- all house shots are easy. You just got to figure out what you got to do to unlock them being easy. So, you know, had to make that worst of the week. So that's mine, Rob. All right. Well, mine is also from the USBC discussion forum. Eat on that, Tim Buck. This is from Barry Loomis, who, by the way, once this post got made, my 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 DMs started getting fired. Like all of a sudden, I'm <laughs> sitting through work, and it's like, bring, bring my phone. I'm like, dude, I'm like shutting my phone up really quick. I'm like, what the hell is going on? You think and it's like I'm a like, person? You think it's like a personal emergency, and it's yeah. really people sending you worst of the week suggestions? Yeah, but people are actually uh. having to take. They're having to take like snapshots um, and like send it to me because they can't directly send it or tag me because I'm not in the group anymore. But don't worry. Don't worry, Tim. I'm getting in that group. You, you watch. You'll know it's me too. Um, so Barry Loomis, congrats because this is by far might be 2021's worst of the week. Congrats, Looms. Do you really need to move your feet while bowling because I only move to shoot 10 pins? Let me read that again, Mike. Do you really need to move your feet while bowling? Because I only move to shoot 10 pins. Huh. What am I gonna well, what, I, Barry, I mean, what am I gonna do with you, buddy? What do you even what do you even say? What do you even say? No. No, of course. No, stay where you're at. <laughs> Switch that, balls. that is the that is definitely the reaction. And I, I love uh, the, the picture, by the way. <laughs> One of the greatest scenes in, in, in movie history. In cinema history, um, but Mike, yeah, Barry, you, you should probably be moving a little bit here and there. I mean, nah, Barry, I say stay right there. Yeah, stay right anyway, there. So, congrats, Barry, on worst of the week. Uh, Throw it harder. Mike, that might be worst of the week of the year, Mike. Honestly. <laughs> All right, Rob, final thoughts. What do you think here? 
you know, um, kind of like wishing PBA bowling was on, Mike. Honestly, like Listen, I'm getting a little bit stir crazy to be Ro- honest with you. Robert Hamilton posted something earlier about betting on PBA bowling, and I, Robert, I took notice of that. Man, how nice, Rob, would it be to see some expanded betting options on PBA bowling going into this year? How nice would it be to see if you could choose a player at the beginning of the event to make the fu- make the TV show or win the tournament and get odds on that? That would that would be awesome. That would what be about really good. Year odds? What about yeah, player of the year absolutely, odds? absolutely. Rookie betting, of the year odds. Betting continues to grow, Rob. Betting continues to become a bigger part of the sports landscape. They just and legalized I, in Arizona. I understand. It's, it's part of the reason why I'm saying these things. And, again, I want to lobby the PBA, lobby Fox Sports, Fox Sports Bet, to improve the product and give us more options for, for the betting. You know, I, I really would love to be able to get deeply into that uh, as we uh, as we get into this new PBA season. Uh, like Robert Hamilton man. in the in, in the chat is saying. Also, if you forgot, Rob, your boy, the Weed the Man, weed man. The won weed his man. first regional title. Yeah, no I'm doubt. sure he got really Congrats. emotional. I'm sure Congrats. he got really emotional. Uh, continues to impress. Continues to impress. You know, let's see. Let's see where uh, you know where the new PBA season brings us. Did he uh, smile when he was holding the trophy? Was- <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so again. Lobby the PBA to uh, to bet on bowling. But, Rob, I agree with you. I'm itching for some bowling action, too. My final thought, Rob, is uh, right before we came on, I saw on a social media post from Sean Rash that he's going to have another announcement sponsor. of a new sponsor Yo, yet again. Grinds. Uh, that guy grinds, man. Is he, I mean, is he, the, is he the best at that yeah. out of the PBA bowlers, at yeah. at going out and, se- and securing his own um, – non-related to bowling sponsorships i think so is he is he and and you know i'm pushing it here i understand but i'm going to throw this out there anyway has sean rash for several years now been showing other pba players what the real path is to serious sponsorships i mean he doesn't really unveil his tricks but he's a grinder like he He's out there no, grinding, but, but, Mike. He's but not un- hiring people to do it for him. He's doing it himself. So. Okay, all right, and, and exactly, and understand, yeah, understand what I'm. Map. Okay, yeah. understand what I'm asking here too, right? It, like, yeah. should should other P, a lot of other PBA players should they be following in his footsteps and going out on their own, representing themselves and approaching? You know, I mean, he has sponsorships from Tony Stewart. Like, that's a serious sponsorship. You know, so uh, approaching businesses approaching individuals like that and trying to get these sponsorship deals for themselves thoughts Rob yeah uh, I mean if I was someone like Kyle Troop Kyle Troop needs to be out there trying to get outside sponsors because to me like Kyle Troop would probably be like would be able to probably get a lot of outside sponsorships Mike I might even go to the fact or go even a step further and if I was Kyle Troop and I would take some of that money that you won and maybe even look into hiring someone to help you bring in sponsors, right? Someone like a Bruce Falcon, right? Who we've had on the show that may, maybe has like connections. I mean, he's shit. He got Tom Small with a, a, a pilot on CBS, right? Oh, it's a like, show now. It's actually a show. Yeah, now. it's a show. So, like, you would think like Kyle might <coughs> talk to Rash. I would reach out to Rash and say, look, like, yo, how, like, what can I do? What can I do to market myself like you do? Because I'm sure. Rash is is doing good for himself with these sponsors, man. Like it, and it helps bowling on top of it, right? Look at the True. NASCAR drivers, Mike. They have all kinds of sponsors on their shirts and jerseys. Right. That are outside yeah, the sport. yeah. The main difference being, I think a lot of those guys kind of walk into it from the associations with the main sponsor of the car, right? Whereas with the what you know what what I'm saying about Sean Rash and the PBA is like maybe these guys need to realize that they need to go knock down some doors themselves. As yeah. opposed to waiting for those doors to open on their own, uh, team so. team Tade in the, in the chat saying Rash's new sponsorship is the st is the str podcast. Yeah, no, I doubt it. You know. I doubt it. We're trying to get our own sponsors, not sponsor other people. Uh, Lindy's bags in the chat asking why can't the PBA get a good beer sponsor anymore? You know, I, I, Jeff, I don't understand that either. Honestly, I, I really don't. It, that that would seem like such a no brainer, especially with Bolero involved with the PBA now, and like. 
I'm sure they have business associations with alcohol sponsors since, you know, that's that's one of their main products that they sell there. Uh, seems like it would be a no-brainer to me. So so I'm not sure. I, I, the only thing I would comment is to is to speculate that perhaps the beer companies don't see the value in advertising and bowling, which I think honestly is a big mistake. But uh, all right, maybe a, a longer discussion for another time. Uh, Rob had a, had a great discussion tonight. You know, even though there's not much going on in the bowling world, uh, I'm glad we were able to chop it up. Uh, everybody, thank you for joining us in the chat as usual, or if you're listening to this afterwards. Uh, you know, we are trying to get people to subscribe to our YouTube channel, so hit us up on there. Give us some reviews on YouTube. Uh, let the people know. Spread the word. Spread the word on Sweep the Rack. Uh, Rob, hit us up on social media. Okay, I'm at the two one fifth on Twitter. He's at Brooklyn Rob eleven. Uh, at Sweep the Rack on all social media platforms. Sweep the Rack at Gmail. If you want to hit us up and uh, throw some thoughts our way, we always love hearing from the people. Uh, Rob, have a great weekend. Enjoy yourself, and uh, I'll catch you next week. All right, mother. See you later. You are now listening to Sweep the Rack Podcast featuring Brooklyn Rob and Big Mike.